Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today's going to be kind of a different kind of video. I'm actually not having a great day and I'm going to share with you why and I'm going to tell you what I plan on doing to cope as I talk about what it's like living with an autoimmune disease. So I'm glad you're here. So normally um, my videos are a little more I won't say positive because it's, it's not negative to be having a bad day. Let's just put that out there right from the start. Sometimes I think we get this idea that if we're not up and positive and happy all the time that we're broken and that we need to shy away from being around humans until we're better again. And it was ironic because I was going to film today and then I was like, I am having a bad day with my Hashimoto's and so normally what I would do is just not film. And I was like, no, you know what? We're gonna talk about the reality of what the bad days look like. I wanna say at the out outset that Hashimoto's hypothyroidism is a medical condition. It is a diagnosable medical condition. I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is simply my experience with Hashimoto's. I had put out in another video that, you know, is this something you guys want me to talk about? And you had overwhelmingly said, yes, you did. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna tell it like it is. So um, a little bit of background. I was first diagnosed with Hashimoto's about, well, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism about 10 years ago. They just diagnosed me with Hashimoto's about five years ago. Um, and that's a lot to do with, you know, evolving medical practice and the, an antibody test that they now do regularly for people who have hypothyroidism, especially women. Um, one in eight women will be diagnosed with hypothyroidism at some point in their life. It's very common and over 40. It is hereditary. My mom also suffers from hypothyroidism. Uh, but the Hashimoto's component of it is is more, well, Hashimoto's is not recent. It, it's been around since 1904, but more and more of us getting diagnosed with it is as more and more doctors have started doing the antibody test. And Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. So that's about as, as technical as you're going to hear me get in this video <laughs> is that yes, it is an autoimmune disease. No, it is not made up. Yes, it is diagnosable by your medical doctor. So, you know, first getting the hypothyroidism diagnosed was huge because I had, um, you know, my eyebrows, I still don't have full eyebrows. I have to pencil those in. Um, I had hair loss, I had very dry skin, I had intolerance to cold, I had extremely heavy periods, I had all of these symptoms, and it took a while to get diagnosed, but finally they figured out that my thyroid was kind of borderline. So thankfully I was seeing a great doctor who was like, let's put you on just a little bit of thyroid medicine. Since then, my thyroid has gone all over the place. I have had to be on much more thyroid medicine and then much less thyroid medicine. And currently I am kind of what they would consider brittle. I have to have my blood drawn right now about every six weeks, <laughs> which is super fun because, um, my doctor is thinking it's because I am perimenopausal. My thyroid is going like this. I'm on too much medicine, then I'm on too little, then I'm on too much and I'm on too little. And we're having a very hard time stabilizing my thyroid. So that's creating a lot of issues and the autoimmune part of Hashimoto's creates a lot of issues. Everybody's different about your symptoms. Definitely I encourage you to just kind of put into Google symptoms of Hashimoto's if you think you might have it uh, because it does take actually quite a few years for the Hashimoto's disease to attack your thyroid to the point where you need to be on medicine. So who knows how long I had Hashimoto's before I was finally diagnosed. But the bottom line is I did not feel great. I felt like garbage going on thyroid medicine helped. And then when they finally diagnosed me with Hashimoto's, I kind of had mixed emotions about it because I was like, okay, well that tells us why, but you, it's an autoimmune disease. So you can't really take a pill for the Hashimoto's piece of this whole puzzle. I can take a pill for the thyroid, which, you know, that's got its own frustrations with going up and down with my levels. But the Hashimoto's, it, it literally means that um, my body is attacking itself and specifically my thyroid. So what that means for me personally is that um, I will have symptoms of extreme fatigue. I will sometimes have shortness of breath. Um, I still have 
intolerance to cold. Uh, sometimes I have trouble sleeping. Sometimes I have trouble with my stomach. Um, there, the list just goes on and on and on of, of symptoms that I have that are probably linked to my autoimmune disease. Um, so yeah, it doesn't sound fun and, and I get that. And yeah, I have good days and I have bad days. But over the years, I have found a few things that have helped me cope and help me have more good days and fewer bad days. And so that's really what I wanted to share with you guys today is kind of how um, I've learned to sort of, um, I have not overcome it. I don't even want to use that word, but how I've learned to sort of live with this autoimmune disease. And um, I've learned a lot about myself and the process. So I really just want to talk about three things. The first thing is you have to have a good doctor. If you have been going to your doctor with symptoms for a long time and they're not listening and you feel like they're not testing you for what you want to be tested for, or they're just not really hearing you, you need to get a good doctor. Uh, I adore my doctor. She listens to me. Uh, she's one of these doctors that will frequently run behind schedule, but I never mind because I know that when it's her turn to be with me, I will have her undivided attention and we will talk about whatever we need to talk about. Um, she's extremely in tune to asking me about other areas of my life when, especially if I'm having kind of a bad season, you know, what's your stress level like? What's your diet like? What's your sleeping been like? All of that. She's an MD, but definitely takes a more holistic approach. Um, so you, you absolutely have to have a good relationship with your doctor. And if you're me and your numbers are all over the place, you're going to see her a lot. So you really want to have a good relationship with her. So that is my number one tip. And you can't really move forward with anything else until you have a doctor that you have confidence in that is going to treat you because this is a medical condition. Um, and don't let anybody tell you something different. The symptoms are not in your head. It's a real thing. And you need to have a doctor that is really going to listen to you and listen to your symptoms. The number two thing that I would say is that you have to develop very good as an excellent self care to the point of annoyance. Um, I, <laughs> I can't get away with things that I used to get away with. I cannot, I have to watch my stress levels. I have to get enough sleep. I have to eat healthy. Um, if I eat like garbage, I feel like garbage and a lot of people can get away with that. I can't. Um, I almost feel like my autoimmune disease is like a turkey timer. You know, those things that pops up on the turkey. It's like my, my body will tell me, um, Hey, you know what? You are too stressed. You're not getting enough sleep. You're not eating well. You're not getting enough exercise. You're not getting good emotional support, which for me means going to my therapist on a regular basis. All of those things play into my autoimmune disorder. And it is, I'm just, going to be really frank, annoying as H-E double hockey sticks, because sometimes, you know, I'm excited about a project I'm working on, or, or I want to be out with friends, or I want to eat things that I shouldn't be eating. And I, I love sugar. I want to eat a lot of sugar and I want to eat a lot of simple carbs. And I've been kind of having some emotional stress lately. So I have been binging some very simple carbs and a lot of sugar. And thus I feel like garbage. And <laughs> you guys, I get angry because I'm like, you know, other people can do this and all that happens to them is they gain a few pounds. They don't feel like garbage for days. And that is where I'm at right now. Um, food has always been an emotional trigger for me. So I'm, I'm stressed. So I eat emotionally, which means I'm eating sugar and simple carbs, which cause me to feel like crap, which makes me feel more stressed. And it just goes on and on and on. Everybody has their own self-care. Um, and this is the one area where I feel like you really have to work hard to figure out for you, what are your triggers and what does self-care look like for you? Now, I watched a few YouTube videos on Hashimoto's before I sat down to film this, and I'm gonna be honest, 90% of them were offering me some supplement that they promised would cure it, it won't. Uh, the others were telling me don't eat gluten or grains, which I have tried. Like I have eliminated all kinds of different things. Um, and although I have way cut down, um, like I'm saying, especially on simple carbs and sugar, that seems to be my trigger. You're gonna have to kind of go, you're gonna have to be a detective about your own body, in my opinion. You're gonna have to go on a quest to figure out 
what do you need to eliminate to feel better? Some people find they do better with a vegetarian diet. Some people find they do better with, you know, no dairy. Some people do better with no gluten. Um, most of us do better if we have a vitamin D supplement. Um, I take a B12 supplement. Of course, there's, you know, just basic nutritional support is really important, but you're going to have to figure out for you. And this is, I like to keep a diary of like days I feel good and days I feel bad. Like my brain fog today, which is a major symptom of Hashimoto's is through the roof. Like it's kind of amazing. I'm even talking to you guys, but I've just been like this all day. I'm having a hard time thinking clearly. It, it like the, the best way I can describe the brain fog is you feel like if you could open up your head and like wash it and close it back up, it just, it just, you just feel full headed and kind of like almost like you have a cold, but you don't have a cold. Um, so you're, you're going to have to become a detective for your own well being, And really it, it, again, I recognize it takes time. It's not fun, but you have to do it. And you have to figure out the best care and feeding for yourself. I had to figure out for me, what do I feel better when I eat this and not that I feel better when I do this and not that. I cannot not get sleep. I just can't. I can maybe get away with it for one or two nights, but then I seriously start to feel it impact me all over. I mean, we're talking inflammation and muscle aches and I hurt when I get up in the morning and it's not because I'm 48. It is, it's been going on since I was in my thirties when I was first diagnosed. So, um, I don't, actually love having to pay that much attention to my self-care. There are other things I would rather do with my time, but if I want to feel good, that is what I have to do. Um, another huge component for me is running and that feels really counterintuitive. I would say a solid 50% of the time because I do not feel good. And the last thing you want to do when you don't feel good is go out the door for a run. But I know that at least a walk, if not a run, I will feel better afterwards. If I do yoga, I will feel better afterwards. So I've kind of gotten into this place where I know that to feel my best and it has nothing to do with weight. It has nothing to do with fitness and it doesn't even have anything to do with my heart. It has to do with how I feel with my autoimmune disease. I have to be active and moving every day. Um, now I don't have to run every day. Some days it's running, some days it's walking, some days it's swimming, some days it's yoga. But if I skip more than say two days of exercise, I feel like garbage. And so again, it's this, so that's the second piece. So get a good doctor, figure out what phenomenal self care looks like for you. And you have to make that happen. And then the third part is to make sure you are surrounded by supportive people. Um, if you have people in your life that you see regularly that don't understand, um, that you have an autoimmune disease, um, you may want to find some that do, uh, especially your spouse, um, your husband, your wife, your closest friends, these people need to understand what it is you're going through. Feel free to pass this video along to them. Um, because you know, there's going to be what a lot of us are really, really good at is being out in the world when we feel great and hiding away when we feel like garbage. So unfortunately what happens is everyone gets a very unrealistic idea of what we're capable of. And I'm certainly not saying we need to, you know, be overly whiny or overly complaining, but you know, on the days when I feel bad, it's actually really helpful for me to say to my husband, instead of just being mad or being cranky or whatever, saying, you know what? I am just, my health is not doing good today. And it's probably my autoimmune disease. I don't know. I'm just not feeling great. My energy is not good. And like, I just got off the phone with him a little while ago and he's like, how are you doing today? I'm like, I'm not good. Like I've been eating like crap. I've had a lot of emotional stress and I'm kind of tanking. So he can be encouraging and he knows how to help me. And he knows that you know, he can do things. He can make sure we get takeout and he can go grocery shopping and he's great at cleaning out the fridge and um, doing more housework. That the worst thing, I, I hate when I feel this way and then things pile up and don't get done. And, and it's, unfortunately, it really affects my self-worth. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video. That's a topic for my therapist. <laughs> but you really have to stop and make sure that the people around you in your life 
know when you're having a bad day because if you, they don't know if you don't tell them and you know yeah when i'm having a bad day i'm going to be more irritable i'm going to you know maybe lash out in anger every once in a while and you know gosh days like i just had where i go to my doctor and i do my blood work and i get the phone call okay your numbers are off again and we're going to have to adjust yet again and this time we're going to do six weeks and i'm like great i get to get my blood drawn yet again and Hear me when I say that I realize that on the spectrum of things that could be medically wrong with me, I'm actually really lucky that this is what is wrong with me, right? I mean, there are people that are dealing with far bigger fish to fry than this. Um, Hashimoto's is not going to kill me. Um, it is a chronic problem. Uh, it can continue to get worse if I don't take really good care of me. It does require medical intervention. And I think the biggest supportive person in your own life is you. How supportive are you being? How much care are you giving yourself? Are you sitting down and figuring out what does self-care look like for me? Because nobody else is going to advocate for you like you. Nobody else is going to find you the right doctor. Nobody else is going to, you know, get you the appointment you need or do the blood work that you need or figure out which foods trigger you and which foods make you feel better. Nobody else is gonna make sure you get enough rest. Nobody else is gonna make sure that you watch your emotional stress. Nobody else is gonna make that appointment with a therapist. You have to be your own best friend and the person who is su supplying the highest amount of self-care for your own body. Um, and if you don't, you cannot be who you need to be for the people around you and who you want to be for the people around you and who you want to be for yourself. So, you know, the key is taking good care of yourself. Then on the bad days, you don't beat yourself up. I feel like garbage today. I know why I feel like garbage because I may have done some emotional eating in a bag of tortilla chips and salsa last night. <laughs> and I may have eaten way too much chocolate yesterday and sugar and too many carbs trigger all of this. So when I went to get out of bed this morning, I hurt and I was I was inflamed everywhere and and my my feet hurt and my joints hurt and I'm super tired. Um but tomorrow will be a better day and I know how to take care of myself and I know kind of how to right the ship, but it's not easy and it takes a really long time. So and you know what? you can be the best you you can be y'all I'm, I'm running half marathons i'm traveling a lot i'm doing all of these amazing things i'm not letting this stop me and it doesn't have to stop you but you do have to just devote some time and energy to figuring it out and figuring out how to take the best care possible of the only you that there is. So I hope this helps. I have no doubt that this has triggered some questions for a lot of you. Um, I would love to do a follow-up video to this where I can answer some of your questions about hypothyroidism and about Hashimoto's. Again, I am not a medical professional. I'm just sharing with you my journey with this disease. So any questions that you have, I will do my best to answer. Um, um, good luck. Um, if this is the beginning of your Hashimoto's hypothyroidism journey, I hope that this helps you not to get discouraged. Please go watch some of my other videos so you understand that I live a very full, very active, very happy life. And this is just a part of who I am. It doesn't define who I am. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.